Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, running a minute or two late here. Got Will here today. Get my screen share up. Apologies. I don't have any pre submitted questions that I'm aware of. So if you've got something, let me know, please. And Sabrina, I'm correct that we don't have any pre-submitted questions, right? Correct. Okay, thank you mm -hmm. for confirming. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know. As always, you can use raise hand, ask in the chat, or ask in QA. Um, whichever is most convenient for you. Have a question concerning account groups migrations. That is James. Yeah, go ahead, James. What you got? So um, <clears throat> we just stood up our first dev environment and, and repo, but we haven't really done any migration. So I'm curious as to how that works. If your okay. project includes groups, like you're, you know, looking for certain groups in a project to mm -hmm. for whatever reason, how do those get migrated? Because I noticed when I uh imported and exported the groups and accounts of course don't get yeah and exported so mm -hmm. how does that work with the repo well you the group and the group association are different things for us so you can have one group you can have the same group be exported to different environments so you don't like but the accounts don't get exported for us and okay. account group associations mm -hmm. don't get exported mm -hmm. But if the okay. ID of the account associate to group the account to group association is the same, um, like if the group ID is the same, then you can keep those things and you can keep the same group consistent across all environments. Okay, so so the if you created a group in say your dev environment, it will get migrated and placed into your next higher up environment. And if you specify it, if you if you add it to your project. Right. If you okay. go to your groups and you actually add it to the project that you care about, whatever that particular project is, you can okay. then send the group um, around. Yes. Okay. But so, by default, it does not do that. Okay. So when you, what you're, what I'm seeing on your screen here is you're, it, you add, uh, you specifically add a group to a project, and it can be added to multiple projects. Correct. Uh, only one project. Oh, so. So you could might create like a shared components project of some kind or like, um, yeah, you, uh, you, something like that. you like a utilities type project, right. which is just a, it's, a, or say, it's not any different than a regular project. It's just how you use it so that you can have all your groups be consistent between environments. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Okay. So depending, yeah. And so depending on how, what kind of like, what are you guys going to be using for user authentication, like single sign on local yes. accounts, AD? Yeah, single sign on, single sign on. Okay. And we're also Great. going to be having like headless stuff too that doesn't have anything, you know, that the users will just go into. So, but yeah, that won't matter for this. But yeah, single sign on is where we'll. Yeah. We'll so, that. what you get, you're going to have something like this. I don't know that I have single sign on installed on my local. Let me install that real quick. And I, I'll just kind of give you a gent real, like, let me put like a Okta. Uh, I'll just do SAML, the generic one. Do I have to restart after this? So, what you want is like, you probably want to create a group. We probably want to create a project called like groups. Now, you. I you can your projects individual projects would have like group permissions so there's group association right. accounts and groups and then there's group permissions and that's how a group gets access to like a folder or the contents of that folder right now your project would own its group permission and its folder structure and everything like that but you would probably have a separate project that you would deploy all these groups to mm -hmm. or and then as you added groups you might you would deploy that and that that project would be deployed very infrequently Right? right, assuming you're right. not adding groups all the time, right? Right, right. So, yeah, it's only in the case that a, a new project has, you know, group affiliations with it that you needed to um, deal with, then you would migrate that. That's right. That group's project. Up yeah. And, and with SSO, it. basically, so what I did is I installed mm -hmm. SAML. There's a, you might use SAML, you could use one of the other flavors, but they're all, they're all generally the same. 
and I'm adding an identity provider mm -hmm. and I'd go set up all the identity provider specific stuff to make sure I can, you know, redirect to my IDP and then redirect mm -hmm. back to decisions and do all the authentication. But there's mm -hmm. this um, SAML uh, account creation flow. So like the first time someone logs into that server, right. we, we check to see if they have an account. We know they're authenticated. We check to see if they have an account. If they don't, we run this flow, right? right. And right. then in this flow, you would basically cust you would you would um, you would want to custom create this right. so that you could say you like the XML response, which you get here is like an input in the um, do do do. It's probably what are we using here? Sorry, user ID. Let me see what do we, what do we have here. Yeah, I guess it's auth response is a string, which is probably an XML string. Um, but uh, let me, this might be the wrong flow, but either way, like you would, you would, you're going to get a response back with like the groups usually. The, hey, this, here's this user and here's the groups that they're a part of. And then you would have some flow logic that would go find those groups on the server and then okay. add the user to those groups using internal service method steps. Our support team can give you all sorts of examples and yeah. templates that you can use here. Yeah, so I that you don't have to build this yourself. Yeah, but okay. this flow plus you deploying the groups and then doing some like some custom work would allow mm -hmm. you to keep users uh, synced between the IDP and the local groups that you have built on dev and deployed up to test and not, you know, and staging and prod uh, and all those things. Okay. All right. That's like, that answers that for me. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, you bet. Happy to help. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I'll go ahead and mute you. And then, all right, we've got a question here from Elon. How uh, can we build a document viewer that displays multiple documents that a user selects from a table? Can we build a flow that downloads a zip file containing data from a report created by the user and the multiple PDF files associated with the report? Can we build a document viewer that displays multiple documents that a user selects from a table? Do we have, I'm sure, I am sure you can using like a data flow of some kind or like an active form flow. Let's see here. Let me create a project. And then I think what you can do, let me build a flow here. And I'm going to fetch documents here. Let me fetch documents. So document is a decisions type. You might use, there's a, you could do this in a variety of ways. I'm just going to use documents because it's easy for me. I'm going to show a form here. I'm going to pick or create a form, create new. This should work. Here's a button. I'm going to edit this grid. I'm going to get rid of all of these rows. Good. I'm going to find a document viewer. There's document viewer. Now, this takes in one thing at a time, document ID. I'll call this thing document ID. And then what I'll do is find data, advanced data grid here. I'm going to select document on this thing. So here's document. Input type is all docs. And the preview display mode, not info only. I'm going to do single select. The output name of this is called selected document. I think I can do is give you some kind of example of how you could have our active form flow update the document viewer here. But first thing, let me just set this up. I'll just do entity. I'll do entity name. Oh, we just call it name here. Okay. So there's name and created by and created on date. I'm just going to quickly confirm that this part works by saving this and mapping in my all docs from my fetch entity step and saving this and debugging this. Okay, I should see docs. I bet it's taking a second to load. All right. That wasn't an ideal amount of performance, but there you go. There's some documents in the database. There's some documents. Now, what I'm going to go do here is see if I can't use an, create an active form flow here, give it a garbage name. And what I want to do is use set value. So I'm going to find form rules and I'm going to use set control value. 
And what I want to do is select the form data document viewer. That'll show me the value, which is its input. And what I want is form data, advanced data grid, selected document, document ID. That should let me think. I'm going to save this. And then I don't want to run on startup is blocking. OK. And then refresh. I want to refresh this thing. The trigger, it'll run on selection change on advanced data grid. Let's see if this works or not. I feel like I'm missing something. Let's see. Okay. Okay, what type of doc is this? It doesn't do all air getting document data. All right, let's let's sort this recently created on dates. There you go, preview image. So here's me kind of having created a gallery like control of documents. That's only going to show me things that it can. You can see it's trying to download these other files as well that it can't render. So it can render, you know, PDFs and PNGs and other things. It can't show DLLs and things of that nature. So I'll pause here. Does this help answer the first question? Um, do the document that allows you to select multiple? Okay. So my question is with this, like with PDFs and so on, can it display at the same time the multiple documents? You maybe if you combine them together, or maybe you could look at a gallery control. We have a gallery control. I think it's quite. Last time I looked at it, it was it's image gallery. You might be able to look at using an image gallery. Oh, sorry. That that was kind of stupid. Um let's see here. Let me add another column. So we can actually look at this thing a little bit. You might be able to render output type. Yeah, you could probably use a file gallery here. This takes in a list and lets you view all of them. So you might explore this image gallery control to be able to look at a, a selection of PDFs. Like here, if I do this and I do document, I'll say uh, gallery docs or something. Yeah, this is probably gonna, I'm gonna filter this down so it doesn't show me everything. And I'm gonna say name, our document file name contains preview. Just to try to give me just some PNGs and not like a bunch of like code compile stuff. If I run that, still lots of preview images. Does it show me anything here? Doesn't. Let's see what's wrong with that. I didn't map anything in, that would be why. So let's try that again. Let's run my very slow loading form. Yeah, so here, here's me looking at multiple documents, and it should be able to do PDFs here, I think. I don't think it matters if it's PNGs versus PDFs. This is our current, this is the our gallery control that we have today. Okay, so with that gallery control, did you have to load in specific selections, or does it just load in whatever is in that table? whatever you pass to it. So here I'm fetching, you could replace this with something, right? But I'm fetching all documents who have preview in their file name. And then I'm passing that into the gallery control that on the form. So you could have like a right click action and it could say like load all documents in case, right? And then the logic of that thing needs to fetch the right files, wherever those files could be. And then okay. pass them into the gallery uh, control. And then whatever you pass in is what your user would see. So the logic of the flow that has the form in it is what's controlling what you're showing or not. It's not showing every single thing in the database um, altogether. Okay. Got you. Um, okay. That, I think that answers my first question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Great. then, yeah. And then moving on to the second question, um, just to give you some background, um, the user is building out a report based on criteria that they set with the form. 
So from that new report created, can we build a flow that downloads a zip file containing that report in one file and then the associated uh, PDF files in the report? Does that make sense? You want to, so like the, it's a, you want to, you're going to show a report of a bunch of PDFs somewhere, right? Right. Like the report will have PDFs attached to it. Right. And then you want all PDFs. Do you want the user to like filter the report down? Um, They, they already filtered it like in the form, like there's a form before the report that's going to filter mm -hmm. whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Um, So from that new, I guess, report that's created, can they download like one file, like a zip file that has the data of the table in one mm -hmm. file and then each PDF that's from that table? But like a, like a CSV of the selected rows, something like that? Or like what's, you could definitely group select items on a report. Those items could be documents and you could create like an entity action to zip up those documents into a zip file. So I could show a report on a dashboard, you know, all legal documents in a case, right? And th someone could group select those and say, get as zip. And I could put all those PDFs for those documents into a zip file together. Okay. And then have a show a download form for a user. And then they could download all those files. That can definitely happen. Is that is that sort of what you're asking? Yeah. Or something I think, different? Yeah. I think that's exactly what I'm asking. Okay. Um, so, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, could you kind of give me a visual of how that would look like? Yeah, sure. So let's do, we got to set some of this up. I'm going to create a case to hold this stuff. And I'm just going to give it a nonsense property. Excuse me. And then I'm going to build a flow somewhere. Here we go. I'm going to build a flow to create that, that case. So I'll come down to user define case entity case test one. I'm going to create it. And then I'm going to put a form here to that. I'm, I'm going to upload some files into this case. Right. And then do, 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 do. Let's create that form. Create new form. Create. And here I'm going to search for multi and I'm going to find multi, oops, I'm going to find the multi file upload. And then I'm going to go to a button here on this. I'm going to change this to file from file data to file reference here. I'll walk through that in a second. This is, uh, you know, uploaded files or something. That's all fine. Great. Now I can get files in. And then I'm gonna come back to my flow and I'm gonna search for file. And I'm looking for step add file references to folder. These are gonna let me create these file reference entities for easy use. So I'm gonna set my create test up here. Here's build data, put constant for my description, put some garbage text for my folder name. And I'm gonna set my parent folder ID to constant, which would be the current folder. Right, and I'm going to come here. My folder ID is going to be my new case ID, which comes from my create case step. And then my file references are going to come from uploaded files here. So now, if I, when I run this, I should get a case and be able to upload files to that case. That'll This is just setting up the scenario here. So I'm going to run this. Here's multi-file upload. So I'm going to choose some files here. Right. So here's two PDFs. I'm going to open those. And I'm going to, right, now I've got two files in my case. So here's case one, and I can see here that I've got these files. Now I can download those files here if I want to. Um, you, and then what I'm going to do is build you a flow. Oh, this, is, this is a place, this gets so complicated so quickly, unfortunately. I'm going to give you an action on the case that's going to let you see all the files in this and then multi-select and download them in a zip file, I guess. It should be easier than it's going to be as I walk through this. Uh, yeah, so uh, here we go. Uh, user action, create user action, which will be, I'm going to name this thing download files. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to fetch. I'm going to find a fetch entity step. And I'm going to now this is a special type of uh, you know user action. I'm going to fetch. I'm going to search for file and see if I can find file reference or file reference entity. That's the thing I just created. So file reference entity. I'm going to go ahead and say give me all the file reference entities in the current folder. So the current, that's, I'm gonna use this entity folder ID on a file reference, which is the parent folder ID of the of the file reference, right? And I'm gonna steal the folder ID from this flow behavior. And now if I run this, I'll get all the files. Then what I'm gonna do is show a form, which is kind of similar to the document thing we just built. So here's this form and I'll go ahead and delete this and I'll find again, an advanced data grid and a button. Right, and then the type here, I'm gonna search for a reference and find that file reference entity type again. There it is. And the info mode, I'll change to multi-select. The input is all file refs. The output name is selected files. That's good. And then I'm gonna find, a, I'm gonna go find a zip step. You know, there's a zip file step here. And then I need a map from that. So the name of this zip would be, you know, I'll do like a merge, right? And I'll say case name, which is, uh, you know, uh, this the entity here. So this is, I'm gonna say like, um, oh, somewhere, entity name. There it goes. I'll say entity name files. Yeah, sure. And then files to include, I'm gonna get from my selected form. So select from flow and selected files and i'm looking for all boo, 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 all file reference all data i think that's gonna work and then i need one more form here oh this feels like so much work to do something that seems very simple sometimes i don't think about that till i get on here and do it uh, and then i'm going to delete this i'm going to find a download Here's file download. And I'm just gonna say file to download is the name. And the type is file reference. So I can keep these the same, selectable, that's great. Now, if I take this and I connect it to my in step, I can then pass my zip file here, which is named zip files one output. Oh, hold on, I gotta change this not, now I'm dealing with file data. That's not confusing at all. Sorry for my stream of consciousness here. This I'm just kind of recognizing in the moment that this is kind of, uh, could be a little easier um, than it is as I map all these things together. So then I need to pass my files into my form, which is my fetch entity step. And, and these are all on, we're gonna all on YouTube. So you, you can watch these at a more reasonable pace than um, okay. that will, me that will be burning next through person. this super fast for you. <laughs> um, but now you see, if I right click this case, I have this action called download files, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't fetch what I wanted. So this is kind of what I want. Like I want to click in here. I want to see my case and I want to have an action to download the files. And what I would have expected to see here, but don't are the files that I've uploaded with the ability to multi-select those, right? Okay. So let me go figure out why my flow isn't working. Mm -hmm. So I fetch. Entity folder ID, I fetch file reference entities by folder ID that returns results. I pass in any results, but none of those show because I didn't set up my advanced data grid, of course. And I can't select if I don't have that. So here's entity name and some other information. Let's save this and try again. In fact, while I'm thinking of that, I need to make a note that that should be a validation. Empty advanced data grid reports should throw a validation error in the yeah. All right, let me try this again. I'll save this, try to make it a little bit easier for us. I'll duplicate our tab here. And I'm gonna come to my case, right click my, or come into my case here, use download files. There's my files. Now I can select them. I can submit that. 
I can then download and there's add files. It's five megabytes and off screen, I'm gonna look in that zip. Oh, I need to name it zip, sorry. Just a second here. Dot zip. Save this and try that again. Download files, select all, submit. Download, there's that. Download, I see my flow and I see my two files inside of it. So just to kind of briefly walk back through all that, what I did, I set up a case. I'm assuming you have a case of some kind, which is like the transact, the, the sort of parent item for like a transaction, right? Like it's a loan or it's a legal review or whatever. Yeah. And then I contrived a flow to submit documents into that case, right? And that's what flow two was. I created the case, I uploaded documents and I use this add file references to folder step. These creates these things called file reference entities. The nice thing about these is they take a file and they allow you to put that file in a particular folder in the portal. So I can open up the, I can make it very easy. I can open the case up and I can see all the files. So all of this is just set up work, right? The important part is, I'm using this file reference entity data type in decisions um, uh, uh, to make it easier to see these files. You, there's there's a variety of file types in our tool. So this is optional, but just a, I think a very, once you sort of grasp this concept, it's pretty, it's very easy to use. I mm -hmm. then went to the configuration folder for my case, and this is where I can code up custom behaviors for that case, custom actions, custom visibility, all these other things that I can make the the really the, make the quality of life sort of, you know, workflow automation changes that users want to see, like email submitter or send back for X and back for Y, all of these types of actions. And I created a flow on a, a thing called a user action called download files. And a user action allows me to create like right clicks, right click actions or action bar actions that ha that always have like the context they're attached to this particular folder or this case type. So I can use, I can always know what case I'm on, right? And in that flow, what I do is I say, hey, I'm in, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a case folder. Give me all the file reference entities for that, fol um, for that folder. So I fetch it by its type and I say, make, use the parent, treat the parent ID of this thing as the current folders ID. I then show them on a form with an advanced data grid with multi-select, so you can select the files you care about. I then pass those files to a zip file step. I then pass the zip file step to a form whose only function is just to be like a simple download form. Its only job is to show and allow the user to download, at which point now I can run through that again. I can get all the files I can care about, well, only the one I care about, right? Mm -hmm. I can download it and I can get a zip file of that specific file and now take that and go use it wherever I might need to. Okay. Okay. And then, okay, I think that answers my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll get this loaded up. I know that was fast. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of stuff to set up there, but it'll be on YouTube in a few hours and then you can uh, review that and happy to answer any additional questions that you might have. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, great. Happy to help. All right. Anybody else have anything? Nope. We just got a question from Jane. Oh, sorry. Is there a download step to bypass the form? Oh, yeah, yeah. you can. You can use a form. It won't make any sense necessarily, but there is a step in our toolbox called uh, end form session. And you can kind of use a trick here. If I search for end, there's an end form session step. And then what I can do is I can use the navigate or open URL action, and I can get the download URL for a file. And if I use this step with a, a valid URL, um, I can get the file to automatically download if the user's browser um, allows that to happen. There are some con constraints there for like security settings on different, uh, on, on the browsers, the, you know, on web browsers. Right. But yeah, you can use this step to contrive an automatic download instead of needing right. that second form. Right. Okay. Okay. So you could like just, yeah, just create a world would say when you're done picking them, it could just say like download in, it will automatically download it for you without yeah. having to go to another form to select it again. Yeah, correct. That's right. You can, you can, you, you can, you can do that for sure.
And this okay. step is how you would do it. Yeah. yeah, I thought I thought it would be important. Make sure. Thanks. It's just not clear that this step can be used to do that. Um, but yeah, it absolutely can. Okay, cool. All right, anything else from anybody? If no one else has got a question, I got a real simple one that's please go ahead. Just because we're we're just starting off so we're um the 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 the, uh, the uh, table space or the the data sets when you create them and you got the the namespaces. Yeah. Are those namespaces do they have to be tied back to the parent folder or can they no. just be arbitrarily named so that you can group them that way or you you probably way? you should override the name almost always because right. what you get is some ugly really long exactly. string if you don't yeah, that's problem is you can't that. yeah you promise you can't change it after creation yeah i noticed that I noticed but that. here so this is where it comes from right, right? Mm -hmm. so you you yes it makes more sense especially if you think about looking at this in sql like mm -hmm. to have all of your mm -hmm. type names have like the same starting prefix or you know, mm -hmm. project name, so you can see them all grouped together, like in the object viewer in SQL. Mm -hmm. You right. should always override them. There right. is no, it does, the, the, it is just a string value. Okay, um, that was my question, yeah. just to make sure that there wasn't any tie back to the folder that I might, you know, miss or whatever. If, if, yeah, not at all. If I'm doing case entities and anything like that. All right. Yeah. It's, better, it's best to try to have these match the, the project name in some way, just for right. Right. ease of, sort of like maintainability, you know, right. use. All right, great, thanks. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> the, the The problem is once they're set, you can't change it. Yeah, like that's yeah, a, that's a, that. not that's yeah. not something we support today. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything else? All right, wonderful. Thanks for all the questions, everybody. I will talk to you next time I host. Have a great day. See ya.